Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and in this video we're going to talk about rule number one, use strong passwords. Now this is the slide from the intro video. If you remember, I told you that we're going to learn why you should use different passwords. And uh, in some subsequent videos, we're going, I'm going to show you how to generate strong passwords and how to use password managers. So the first thing we want to talk about is what makes a strong password. So a lot of you have probably been told that a strong password meets this criteria here. Well, you can forget all that. Just, just forget it. And I'll show you why. So let's take password A here. It meets the criteria of the previous slide. It's got your eight characters. However, this password can be cracked in 18.6 hours, assuming um, 100 billion guesses per second, or for a more sophisticated system, 1.12 minutes. And that's assuming uh, 100 trillion guesses per second, which using cloud technology really isn't all that hard to do. And this is assuming a brute force attack for passwords, which is a, a very unsophisticated way of guessing passwords. So this is pretty much the lowest level of password guessing. Combine that with password B over here, which is 16 characters long. Just doubling the number of characters has exponentially increased this to 9.27 million centuries, or if you got uh, some cloud power behind you, 9.27 thousand centuries. So you can already see immediately how just doubling the link increases difficulty for guessing the password. And if you look at these two passwords, which one do you think will be easier to remember, right? So remember, length always beats complexity. Another thing you want to do with a good password is make it hard to guess. So to do that, you want to avoid information on social media, specifically family members' names, mother, especially mother's maiden name, any type of um, family-related um, information siblings, grandparents, you name it. Important dates, anniversaries, birthdays, these are all things that um, if you have posted on social media somewhere, if someone's trying to guess your password, they will use this information to generate a custom dictionary, which will be a lot more successful than, say, that brute force guess that I just showed you earlier. Hobbies or interests? Okay, so if you really like the Cowboys and you have your Facebook profile has pictures of you decked out in cowboy stuff and going to cowboys events and all this other stuff. Yeah, um, don't make your password anything about that. Also, facts about you. Where you went to school. What street you lived on. Um, the town you grew up in. All that is off the table. And you also want to avoid quotes from your favorite books or movies. This one's very important because if you have, um, say, a quote from, I don't know, Scarface or something on your profile, and then you make that your password, well, you now that would be one of the things that someone guessing your password would try to use against you. So you want to make sure that something that um, doesn't really have an association with you, or if it does have an association with you, Make sure that that association isn't available on social media. All right, so just for fun, um, I pulled the uh, top 10 most common passwords. Uh, this was from a breach in 2009, and a security company did a report on it in, I believe it was two years ago, uh, 2014. And uh, they had 20 passwords, but I decided just to put the top 10 passwords. And um, these are all ordered, the most common downward and you can see that one two three four five six i mean this is just embarrassing password was number four yeah abc one two three i mean th this is some uh very common stuff and if someone were to try to guess your password you can guarantee that they would put these passwords here at the top of their list of guess passes to guess so if you want an example of how a uh, baby chick makes a password this is it. So we're going to move on to something called the passphrase. Now a passphrase is what you should be using in place of a password. They're um, longer than a password, they're easier to remember, and they're also harder to guess. So here's some examples. Uh, the example I gave a couple slides ago, my dog Skip loves pie, 
is an example of a passphrase. You saw that just by length alone, it would take a brute force attack several centuries to crack it. Another one, um, they can use random words. Uh, there are plenty of generators out there on the internet, and we will look at one later on in another video, such as uh, Spear Patio Colt Hayden Situ Radar. And if you kind of like pair these off, you can actually remember these a lot better than you could um, a very complex password. I mean, Spear Patio, that just has a picture in your mind of a patio that's made of spears or a patio with lots of spears in it. Also, you can use proper sentences as passwords as long as the uh, system that you're putting in the password accepts spaces. You're good because a space in most cases is just considered a special character. So grandma shown us 31 parsec apes would actually make a really strong passphrase. Just make it something funny. Have fun with it. Um, passphrases should be something that you can't guess and it should be a minimum of four to six words. And if you make it something fun that you can remember, especially something with a funny image comes in your head, it'll be a lot easier to remember these later. So let's say you got your really strong password or your really strong passphrase. Well, I don't know, with all the news that's been going on, you can assume at some point it'll be leaked. So in this example, you have your super strong password here. If, say, your email were compromised, which at the time of this recording, there's a very big email provider that uh, had a data breach a couple years ago, and we're just now learning about it. So it would take nothing for the bad guys to get that password. So if you use that password for your email, now they have access to your bank account information, your work computer, your um, school, and your social media. All that just by, just by a leak, and that was completely out of your control. So this is kind of the turtle model of security here. You've got that really strong password, but once you penetrate that outer shell there, well, you have access to everything. A better approach would be to use different passwords for everything. So for example, if your email were compromised, well, as long as you didn't use that password anywhere else, your bank account information's fine, your work's fine, your school, your um, social media, all that's fine. This is what I mean by being closer to a dragon. You have multiple layers of defense. So if one thing's compromised, it limits the damage. Another way of thinking about this is if we use the boat analogy. The way the Titanic was supposed to work was it was segmented into different, the hull was um, segmented into different sections, so if one section flooded, it wouldn't spill over into the other ones. Of course, that's a really bad example because, you know, we all know what happened to the Titanic, but as long as you keep your, keep different passwords for each account, you don't have to worry about one getting compromised. And instead of having to call up your bank, change a bunch of stuff at work and all that, you just have to go to, say, your email and regain control of that account, and you're good. So, all right. Uh, one passwords can be easy enough to keep track of, but how do you keep track of multiple passwords for multiple accounts? Well, no human should be expected to do that. So we have these things called password managers. Now, a password manager is a program that sits on your computer or sits in a browser and stores all your passwords in a vault. Now, of course, that vault requires a master password to access all of your other passwords. So if that password gets compromised, or if the bad guys get a hold of your, your uh, database file, they could, in theory, brute force their way into your password if it was easy to guess. Now, there's two general types of password managers. There's the ones that are built into the browser, and then there's standalone ones. Each one has pros and cons, and um, we'll actually get into that when we, do, um, when, I sh when we do the video on password managers. Now, another way of doing it is do what I like to call a paper copy, or a paper manager. And that would be simply writing down the passwords. Now, a key distinction here is you want to leave out some key information in the password. So 
say all of your passwords have a common prefix or suffix, or there's always a word in there or something, or you want to leave out some characters or a word that um, you know will be in your password. That way, if someone were to get a copy or find that paper with all of your passwords, they won't be able to necessarily access your account because they'll be missing that key information. And that about covers it for the general overview of how to use um, or why you should be using uh, multiple secure passwords. There'll be uh, a couple videos after that after this that are uh, demonstrations of ways you can generate passwords and also um, some password managers. So I hope you enjoyed the video um, and found this useful. If you um, look down in the description, you'll see the information for my social media, Facebook, you can follow me on Twitter, and uh, also I'm going to have my sources that were in this video uh, linked down there below in case you want to read that uh, report that I linked to. Play around with that uh, password generator. So until the next video, um, thanks for watching and uh, be safe out there.